creative practice, the, the process of making things, is often, I think, an important way of giving voice to people for whom words might be challenging. My name is Casey Strine. I'm Vice Chancellor's Fellow and Lecturer in Ancient History here in the Department of History at the University of Sheffield. And I work on the history of the ancient world and in particular what we know as ancient Israel, which was the culture that produced what we think of as the Bible, um, and in particular the bit of it that we call most often the Old Testament by its Christian name. So I work on both that as a piece of literature and on that as how it helps us to reconstruct the history of the ancient world. When I speak about the Hebrew Bible as a text written by involuntary migrants to involuntary migrants about involuntary migration, that often strikes people as unusual. That's not the way they're used to thinking about it. And so one good example to help people understand that is just think about the book of Genesis and to think about the main characters in that book, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, who are familiar to very many people. Abraham experiences involuntary migration as a child, and again later because of a famine. Isaac, Abraham's son, also experiences famine, but migrates around the area he is living in and is termed an internally displaced migrant. Isaac's son Jacob, under threat of death, flees to his uncle and becomes an ancient type of an asylum seeker. Joseph, Jacob's son, is sold into slavery by his brothers and becomes what we would term today a trafficked person. Now that's, as I suggested at the beginning, a very unusual description of the story in Genesis from what people are used to hearing, but it shows us, I think, just how much both the experience of involuntary migration and the theme of involuntary migration dominates a book like Genesis, the first one in the Bible. In my research on the Hebrew Bible, looking at migration, being obviously a migrant myself here in the UK, but not an involuntary migrant, I became aware of how that experience can really help us to understand these texts, but, but how my particular experience as a migrant was very different than the sort of involuntary experience that was depicted in the text. Having this in mind, with Emily Taylor, the artist and art therapist that I've collaborated with, we started a project called Back Where You Came From, which was designed to allow us to read these stories and respond to these stories with people who've experienced involuntary migration. And we decided to do that by a combination of reading and discussion and making of images, because we felt like that that both allowed for us to hear their perspectives and to gain their knowledge and insight, but also provided a way for them to express their response to their stories and to these stories from the ancient world they were asking them to read. I met Casey when he came down to this studio. He came to an open studio event that we held here and he was attracted to my work um, as an ancient historian. He has a, um, a great interest in ceramics and um, a quote of his that I love is that um, whilst people often say history was written by the victors, pottery is always of the people. And um, I think it was from that kind of a point that we, we started to gel and talk about our ideas. And he told me about his ideas to work with people experiencing forced migration and um, make artwork. And so we designed a series of sessions that occurred on weekday evenings where we would meet together and share a meal, which was an important part of building an environment of safety and trust with one another and then we'd read a portion of text from the book of Genesis and discuss that. Whatever themes the group wanted to talk about, no directed questions, just allowing people to respond to what struck them most uh, significantly from these stories. And then we had a period of time where we would make art. And I think that, that connected very much with the way I like to work um, as, as an art therapist and as an, an artist. Um, in maybe holding a space and very much working from the outside in, in that you're protecting a space in which people can explore and bring their own ideas and start to feel safe to bring their own ideas. And that can take a number of weeks to get to a point where people feel that they will be heard and they can talk about what they really want to, ha want to say. The Back Where You Came From project initially was conceived as a series of 12 of these sessions. And 
As we came near the end, we started talking as a group about the fact that we had created all of these really lovely things and that they carried such a strong message about an experience of involuntary migration, the experience of coming and living in the United Kingdom, and a very different perspective on an issue that obviously was very prominent in social debate and discussion at the time, uh, but a totally new perspective on that. And so we agreed together as a group that we wanted to exhibit the material, and that took some planning and ultimately occurred in June of 2015 during Refugee Week. And it was designed, in as much as we could, to be an opportunity for people who had not been part of the project to come and have some of that experience themselves. We presented the images with very little commentary, but some short statements from our artists, from the involuntary migrants who had made these things. And we presented that alongside the brief bits of the biblical story from the book of Genesis that we read, so that hopefully we could invite people to come into an art gallery to not just see some beautiful images, to know that they were connected to this experience of involuntary migration and seeking sanctuary in Sheffield, and to read the stories themselves, to reflect on such an important issue, hopefully in a new, more thoughtful way than you would just engaging with a quick video on the web or a news report or a statement from a politician.